What's up, folks? Kirk here with Kirk Giordano Plaster. We're about to color coat this house here. And what I'm going to show you is some things you can and cannot do. Because I get a lot of calls. Folks say, gee, can we do this? Can we do that? I'm going to show you some tips right off the bat of what we can do and what we can't do. This was bricks two days ago. We went ahead and we put a fast set stucco on it. And the fast set stucco allows us to do scratch brown and color in the same day if we want. But I don't recommend that. Anyhow, we had other things to do. So this this brick uh, facade here, we just went ahead and uh, skinned it. Today we're doing the color coat. Yesterday we came and this blue stuff is the bonding agent. I use well treat by Larson as my particular bonding agent. Yep, it's a lot of bonding agent. Anyway, let me show you guys some things you can and cannot do. Uh, I'll just show the truck over there. See those bags of concrete? Those bags of concrete are 100 pounds each, 94 technically. Um, Anyway, we're mixing the concrete now, the plaster, stucco, whatever you want to call it, and we're putting two pounds of color. We generally start with eight bags in the mixer. We've, um, I had some cases where we have a lot of peel and paint like this. I'll generally, when I do a color coat, I generally charge two hundred dollars to pressure wash a house. But when I see paint that possibly could be peeling, I tell the homeowner, you got to pressure wash it yourself because we can't get involved in peeling paint. Um, anyway, for two for 200 bucks, I generally uh, pressure wash a house and I remove dirt, dust, grime, mold, moss, stuff like that, but we can't touch the paint. Anyhow, this chimney we also did a couple days ago, uh, that's a fast set stucco, so it is set today to accommodate the color code. It's only two days ago which we did that. Conventional stuff would have to wait two weeks. Uh, we go around here. This little, this is an odd thing I found out a couple days ago. Generally I'll put fiber mesh tape over large cracks. I scored this with a razor knife and these two buildings don't touch. There is a gap here, a quarter inch. And so I, I, what I did was I put some caulking in here, uh, polyurethane, Sikaflex. I put fiber mesh tape then we put the bonding agent over that just to stop the water from going between these two. Certain things you can and can't do. This, I can't guarantee it won't hairline crack again because the two buildings aren't connected uh, properly. And that's generally what you do is you break the stucco out, you put a stud here, you lag bolt it together, put it all back together. This was just butted to itself. We're only as good as what we have to work with, guys. All right, this is, this is a little addition here that was put on I'm not sure when, but uh, I'll show you. I'll show you the rest of the place here. Um, again, we applied the body nature yesterday. Kind of watch your foot, Jay. There's a deck here. Don't fall in the swimming pool. Uh, good job, Dan. Dan, I got Dan uh, going over last minute stuff, putting a second coat of body nature where I had them remove the dirt because. Here's, the, here's where the last painter guy, but if they ever do landscape, and I want to go way down here. That's, I generally will pull back or tell folks pull back. That way we can uh, get a little better. Uh, of course, we put a new sliding glass door in it. The last thing I want to show you folks is this wall. This wall, this fella, I tell folks, you can get a 1600 PSI electric uh, pressure washer. I recommend a 24. This guy got a 3100 uh, PSI, that means it's pretty strong. And he removed a lot of the peeling paint. Now, we don't know if there's lead in it and stuff like that, so therefore I can't really uh, do uh, the pressure washing because for 200 bucks, there's a $35,000 fine if there's lead in the paint. So we don't touch that stuff. However, he, he pressure washed as best he could. And he said, man, I did a great job. Yesterday we came and I used a putty knife and a trowel. We did remove a little bit more because a lot of times, when you pressure wash a house, you'll remove 98%, but the next day or later on, as the water sets, it'll still peel off here and there. So I know I've, I've done a, many, many houses. So that was before that new law of uh, lead stuff came out. So anyhow, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a new color coat finish over the entire thing. We'll show you that when we get to that stage two. All right, guys, Jay spreading. I'm going right behind him. The difference between what we're doing now, this is this aggregate is all consistent. The scratch and brown and with the float finish is pretty nasty, so we're giving it a very uniform finish. Don't know how to come out with this uh, red burgundy color. 
We're looking forward to see what the heck that looks like. While we're at it, guys, let me show you a typical thing that I'm asked very often, almost every job. Should we paint first? Yes. Paint your ease first, paint your trim first. That way, once we have this color coat maintenance free finish on here, you're not dripping all over our work. Is there a little bit of touch, touch up? Of course there's a little bit of touch up for any, any house. We're using this blue tape right here. Now this blue tape, we float it and it, we use water on here. So when we pull the blue tape off, say for example, water goes behind it. If we use the red vinyl tape, which I, I use a lot of, that'll pull the new paint right off. So we use the blue, but I always tell folks, there's still going to be a little bit of touch up. So I want to make that clear to folks, just as far as expectations. There's no such thing as me, and I'm pretty good at spreading and floating not to leave a few crumbs here and there when we're done, but it's always better for you folks to paint first. Okay guys, we're all set. We're starting to light patches. That's where it's drying. We just finished this, so this is dark. By the way, this color is called Southern Moss. It's a La Habra, it's a cementitious finish. Uh, it means when it gets wet and dark, it's just like these bricks. Here's uh, the front. I was wondering how that color was going to look, red with uh, southern moss, but I, I think it looks cool. In fact, that might even go to say it looks kind of sexy. Last thing we'll show you is this wall here. The contrast of colors is, so I think it's pretty cool. Uh, we won't go around the back then. Uh, not necessary, but yeah, we tied the chimney. It was a brick chimney at one time, tied it all to the wall. Anyhow, this is the La Habra finish. My name's Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Thank you folks for watching. Have any questions about color coats? I've done about 100, 200 houses. Give us a call. Thanks, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one.